Welcome back, everybody. Take a break with Steven. Steven Shane. Good to see you, my friend. How are you doing today? Excellent. Excellent. I'm always in a good mood. When we All right. What do you got on your T-shirt Fun. today, Alex? What do you got? It, on your just, it's just a us? black button down. It's so dark in here. You can't even see the buttons. Just a black button. Uh, down. No, no Star Wars. Nothing. No, no, no branded anything today. I'm just going fancy. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right, Alex, what do we got for today? Yeah, well, of course, uh, Disney Plus. Never, I don't think we'll ever not talk about a Disney Plus show the way that, the way that things are slated. Um, but we're going to talk a little what if. Um, more, a little more Disney Plus. We're going to talk about War of the Realms, uh, Agents of Atlas. James E. Wu, FBI. And then uh, we're going to dip onto the other side of the country and talk a little Macross. And then back to probably one of the best DC movies in the last 20 years, uh, Peacemaker from Suicide Squad. Right, which John is getting his own series soon yes. as well. Oh, my God. It's got yeah. to be amazing. It's going to be. All right. All right, cool. What are you kicking us off with, Alex? Yeah, let's talk a little what if. So I we we both watched the first episode. Yeah. Um, it was pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's um, fun. I, I, I think I enjoyed it more than, than I, I don't really watch cartoons. Right. right. Or animated Unlike series. Unlike me, who watches everything. Right. Right. So it's something that, like, I don't normally do. I haven't done it in a long time. And uh, I thought it was pretty good. I yeah. It was, like, a, kind of a fascinating. I, I think, you know, it was, uh, I don't want to say it's for kids or not for kids, but there was definitely, like, a lot of violence in there. So I don't know that it's a kid's animated series, right, mm-hmm. the way, you know, some of these other yeah. shows are. Um, but I thought they did a pretty good job. I like that you could hear a lot of the voices out there. Yeah. Um, Chris, you know, Captain America did sound like Chris Evans, even yeah. though it wasn't Chris Evans. They did a very good job of sort of, yeah. you know, hiding that. Um, but it was good. I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, it was fun. I, I feel like if they had the time, the money and, and everything, they probably would have done like this could have been a live action TV show, but they don't have that would take so much time and effort and everybody's schedules that they're like, no, 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 this is definitely going to be animated. It'll be quick and it'll be easy. Yeah, I thought it was funny. And, and obviously, when it comes to animated, the voice acting, they can do it in a studio, wherever yeah. they are. Literally, yeah. it, they can do it in a closet on their yeah, on their I've, ta- I've talked Yeah, I've talked to some voice actors before, and they're like, it's kind of a strange process because you're by yourself, mm-hmm. and you're reading your lines as if you're interacting with someone else. Then they take that stuff, they take it back to the studio, and then four or five months later, they show you the, they animate it to your voice, the lips right. and the face and the, the facial expressions and everything else. And then, then you do you then you record the next batch of it. But again, right. you're like by yourself in a room, yeah, you're not yeah. with the other actors. You're, ho- you're, you're not- hoping your your, re- your replies match their reply. Correct, and the expressions and everything yeah. else. So uh, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so the first episode: uh, What if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? Yep. So uh, Steve Rogers is seriously injured, and then Peggy Carter becomes the world's first super soldier. And then obviously she's British, so the the, the super soldier has a <laughs> Is 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 uh, got the British uh, emblem on the shield and not yep. the American emblem on the shield. Okay, so this does come from the comic books, Alex, mm-hmm. and this book has gone absolutely bonkers. Yes, um, not all of the what ifs are coming from the comic books. So the ones that right. are, I think, are really going to sh- are shooting crazy. Okay, so Exiles number three, uh, July of two thousand eighteen. The regular cover is a David Marquez cover. Uh, there are 34 blue label and zero gold label 9.8. That's about a $550 book today. I think Boy. that book was probably like a hundred bucks. Like a month not ago. even. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Very, right. very, very right. easily. Right. Uh, and, and it's about a 50 to $60 raw book today. Uh, so it's a, it's a Saladin Ahmed story uh, with Javier Rodriguez art. Did they credit them in the show? I don't know because uh, theoretically they didn't create the character. This is a character from that was created for the yeah. Marvel Puzzle Quest game that they yeah, then yeah. that they then imported into the comic book. So I, I'm assuming that the credit accreditation would go to the game developers, the story artists for the yeah. game developers. The writers are listed as AC Bradley and Matthew Chauncey. By the way, uh, you notice at the end they have the Watcher played by Jeffrey Wright. Yes, uh, he's in all of the episodes. Sure. So I guess the the theme that runs throughout is the watcher. And you'll talk about, we'll talk about that for a little bit. And, and then we'll, maybe we'll, we'll go into the watcher more next week. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So yes, and then you have the Mike McCone headshot variant cover, uh, not very collectible because uh, she's not on the cover. Right. Uh, so it's double zeros on blue and gold, and that's about a $20 raw book. Uh, then the big one, which is what you said, it originated in yep. the game, and this is the best cover by far, is the Javier Rodriguez 1 in 10 game edition, right. which is by far the best cover. 23 blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. That's about 1,000 to 1,200. One just sold for 809.6. That book is oh, on boy. fire. Yeah. I know. And then there's a Javier Rodriguez 1 in 25 variant cover. Not as nice as the game edition. Obviously, the game is where it originated. Yep. Uh, there's three blue and zero gold label 9.8s. That's about a $110 raw book which means when that finally gets graded, if people get those graded, I would think that those are also going to be $1,000 to $1,200 also. Definitely. So so now talk a little, we're going to go into the Watcher, maybe appearances next week. Talk a little bit about the Watcher. Why do you think they had the, the, the theme of the Watcher throughout? Yeah, I mean, the Watcher is is the Watcher tribe or the Council of Watchers. Uh, they watch the history unfold and, and they, you know, there's, there's, uh, I think the original watcher had a recording device that was like an android robot um but they watch they're watching things so they watch you know the variant timelines is now that you know now that we know from loki uh and you know and just saying like oh you know this is what happened but what if it didn't happen this is what it would look like and it's kind of it's kind of neat seeing the watchers we saw them in guardians of galaxy 2 there was an end credit scene with him and and them and stan lee um but this like solidifies them more in the mcu universe Right, right. Okay, and it'll be interesting if they wind up bringing Jeffrey Wright into the MCU at some point. Yeah, why not? Or Giant they're just going to leave him. Watcher. Yeah, just leave him over there. Okay. All right. What do we got next, Alex? Yeah, talk about uh, Agents of Atlas, the new Agents of Atlas, the, the mini series, War of the Realms, new Agents of Atlas. Yeah. So why why do you think this? series i mean i mean you'll know more than i this series has been on fire uh, what is the reason for that well this series is a big series for uh agent Wu, who we saw a lot of in wandavision so he's not going anywhere this is a series that also was the first appearance of a couple characters um that may or may not make it into you know more into the marvel universe and or tv shows or you know and stuff like that um this series is also a mini series spinning out of a event title, which tend to not get print runs very high. So, you know, especially if you're an agent woo collector trying to get appearances and everything, this is a big book and Amadeus. Yeah. Cho. It's an Amadeus shows in it as well. So, you know, yeah. all of everything is hitting for this book. Yeah. So it's, it's just going absolutely crazy. Okay. So war of the realms, new Atlas, new agents of Atlas, number one, July of 2019, Billy Tan cover. Uh, 1967 blue label and 14 oh, gold label 9.8s, right? So that's about a $200 book. It's a pretty decent pop, but it is $35 raw. It also has the first appearance of Luna Snow, yep. uh, Seol He, uh, Wave, Pearl Pangan, Crescent, Dan B, mm -hmm. and it's the first use appearance of Arrow, mm -hmm. who's Leiling. So, and Io as well. So there's a lot of different characters in here as well, which, uh, you know, at any point in time, they could just bring them in. And, yep. right. and Arrow has and then, had her own miniseries. So like that's, they're definitely right. not forgetting these characters. Right, right. And then the Giuseppe Camincoli variant cover, 95 blue label, one gold label, 9.8. That's $115. Then there's a Pyong Jun Park, one in 25 variant cover, 161 blue label, three gold label, 9.8. That's $350 book. It's about $120 raw, Alex. Uh, then the Patrick Zercher one in 50 variant cover, 163 blue label, 9.8, two gold label, 9.8. That's a $1,500 book, the Patrick Zercher book. I don't know why it's so much, but it's crazy. I mean, maybe maybe retailers yeah. just didn't order them. They didn't order them. Yep, yep, get those yep. books and you just can't find them. Yep. All right. Cosmic, Comic Odyssey did two variants with Miko Sayan, the regular and the virgin. The regular is 187 and 46 on the blue and gold label 98s. Uh, those are not available. I can't find them anywhere, even though the pop is 187. Yeah. Uh, on the virgin covers, uh, 138 blue label, 30 gold label 98s. Those are $1,500 on the virgins. Uh, then the second print came out uh, August of 2019. A uh, G Young Lee cover, 119 blue label, 14 gold label, 9.8. That's about $120. Then they did a, like we said last time, is there's a virgin variant cover, one in 25 by G Young, G Young, yep. Young Lee. 
And that's 84 blue label, 35 blue label, 9.8. That's $250. And then Unknown Comics with Comic Odyssey did a Miko Sayen partial sketch variant cover second print. 98 blue label, 98 blue label, 15 gold label, 9.8. That's a $600 book. Alex, you need to call your friends at Comic Odyssey. I know. Get a couple of books. <laughs> yeah. I I'll call Darren over and I'm known. Maybe he's got some extra ones on the side. Yeah, definitely. Alex, make a call. Uh, then there's a second print G Young Lee Comic Mint Edition A, 154 blue label, six gold label, 9.8. That's about 100. Uh, second print G Young Lee Virgin Variant Cover, a mint edition B. There's nothing Jeez, in the census so yet. Um, so the first one, the A, is 3,000 copies. The B is 600. There's nothing in the census yet, but I think they're, they just graded a few of them because they just started appearing. Yeah. Uh, then there's a second print Sabine Rich Golden Apple Variant Cover. <laughs> That one is not expensive because 115 blue label, one gold label, 9.8. That's about $150. That's because Silk is on the cover. So Just, it doesn't have yeah. the main characters on the cover. And then there's a third print, Billy Tan cover, 90 blue label, 9.8, zero small. gold label, 9.8. And that's a $400 book. It's super small. So these books are very, very, very expensive, Alex. Yeah. I mean, there must be a lot of speculation going on over there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All Definitely. Right. All right. Especially with Jimmy Woo. Yep. You interrupted my drum roll. I know. I uh, What's wrong with me? I'm off my game today. <laughs> Alex's pick of the week. What do you got for us? Uh, I'm going to take a, 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 a left turn and talk about Barbies. I want to talk wow, about that Barbies. Is, that is a turn. That is a and turn. it's actually going to be the opposite of what I usually talk about is how much they aren't going for. Um, Barbies, I think have been a collectible item that people kept in box for a very long time you know when 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 you're talking like the height of people figuring out old stuff's worth money you know you're talking about like late 80s early 90s oh my gosh this old thing goes for this much barbie's been around for a very long time so when people started seeing that like an auction house is like original barbies were going for thousands of dollars what did everybody do? Same thing with comics. They rushed to the store and they bought a billion of them and mm -hmm. they kept them in box. You know, Barbie action figures from the 90s, you know, Ninja Turtles. Uh, we've talked about Silverhawks, Thundercats. Those things go for a lot of money because they're not a lot of them in, in boxes. You know, boys and girls pulled these out and play with them. These, these were definitely play with. But adults, you ripped it because you ripped them open, right? Ripped them open. I had I had to I had to take them and fight had them fight each other and and you know <laughs> take them all over with me. Uh, but I think Barbies on on another side is you know a lot of adults started collecting Barbies and saving them. And you know you can find Barbies from uh, the '90s and the early 2000s in box mint condition for less than what they paid for them in the store. They're they're not the the value isn't holding with them because there's so much of them still in box are any of them selling uh, that you've noticed that you know there's there's always not? there's always some variants of those barbies that sell for much you know the birthday barbies go for a little bit more uh, but like especially ones that were like collectible anniversary or christmas time or the ones that have collectibles on the title you know just like you know star wars episode one toys they're, they're not i mean everybody has them in card nobody took them out you find it's it's rarer to find loose Star Wars Episode One toys it's than funny. it is to find them uh, mint and package because everybody thought they were going to be worth something. So That's it's just funny. a weird thing, and, and and you know I don't know if there's just not a lot of Barbie collectors, but the prices are very easy. If you wanted a collection of in box Barbies, you could start getting on going to eBay and twenty bucks a pop, easy peasy. You'd have a collection in no time. Got it. Got it. Which one are you getting, Alex? Uh, no, I am not a Barbie collector. Although there was some cat. DC ones cat. that that are pretty neat. So, all right, maybe we'll talk about those at the next one, next show. All right, what do we got next, Alex? Yeah, let's talk about um, uh, Macross. Or yeah, I mean these books again. I mean it's just one of those other nostalgia properties from the 1980s that's gone absolutely bonkers. Yeah, uh, Macross number one, December of 1984. There's 53 blue label, one gold label, 9.8. There's 119 blue label, zero gold label, 9.6. There's 139 blue label and five gold label, 9.4. So a number one is upwards of $6,000. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, a 9.6 is about 600 and a 9.4 is about 285. Any particular reason why we're seeing these jump now? Is it just more of the night? I mean, I've seen it with sports cards. We've yeah. seen it with comic books like 
certain covers where like like Hulk 340, where it may not be anything particular, or Batman with the McFarlane covers, where there's nothing particular that happens in the issue. Right. But but it has a particular cover. I mean, is there anything that's driving this uh this these prices up? I, I mean, it's it's nostalgia, it's it's rarity of a of a nine eight copy. I mean, these were prestige format books that you know most people know it as Robotech, not lacrosse. Um, but you know, this is something that, you know, same thing with Thundercats and Silverhawks. And, you know, we talked about all the stars, He-Man, you know, it's the nostalgia. And then like, oh, I would like a perfect copy of that. Oh, there is none on the market or there's only right, one right. on eBay. You know, you know, it, it, it may be easy to get a 9.4 or 9.2 and then, you know, 9.6 is our 285. That's not that bad for a 9.6 of, of a right, rare right, right, book. Right. But, you know, a 9.8, it, it, it's, it's that. It's that. It's trying to find that perfect copy for your collection. And you know, there's a lot of raw copies of that book out there. They printed a good amount. Those are not hard to find raw, um, but finding a nice copy is hard. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that more and more like the Batman 436 that we discussed a few weeks yeah. ago. It's like, you know, you, you could find them. They printed yeah. a zillion of them, but find them in the nine eights is be, just become challenging for people. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, cool. All right. And then what do we got last today, Alex? Yeah, let's talk about uh, my favorite John Cena character, uh, Peacemaker. You can't see me. <laughs> we saw him, see, a can... lot of him. Right. Okay. So I, I think he's got a, a great second act. Um, very rare that somebody has one icon. You know, I always say this about film or television. It's very rare where somebody can create an iconic character. Right. And John Cena is the iconic character of himself. Yes. Right. Right. And, and, you know, Dave Batista is an iconic character of himself. And now he's Drax. Right. Right. And, you know, I was looking about like, you know, it's hard enough to have one iconic character in your life. Uh, it's very, very rare where you have two. Mm-hmm. When you have Harrison Ford, who was Han Solo and Indiana Jones. Yeah. Right. Where where you've got, uh, you know, you know, Robert De Niro, who was, you know, Raging Bull, Taxi Driver. Right. And, you know, Vito Corleone, uh, you yeah. know. Uh, you know, Scarface and, and Michael Corleone for <laughs> so Al Pacino. Much, like yeah. you, you've got you've got certain people that have uh, Rambo and Rocky for, for right. Sylvester Stallone. So it's very, very rare to create one iconic character, let alone two. So give John a lot of credit. He's yes. got a great second act. And obviously, there's a reason why they gave him his own TV show. So he's you're going to see Peacemaker for a long time to come. I know that we've talked about Peacemaker uh, before on the show. When we were talking about Suicide Squad. But but let's discuss a little bit about why you want to talk a little bit more about it now. Well, I think if you want to rewind to that show that we talked about, Peacemaker, it, this was, I think the, the the what had what was shown was was uh, John Cena in like shorts and a shirt, which you see it like you know, nice right, shirt, right, right. nice shirt. So the whole point was we were like, oh, there's no way they're going to do his costume. The costume's so weird; they would never show up on a TV show with the metal helmet. And the weird dove, um, right, right, right. and they killed it. I mean, like the right, costume right. is amazing. Like when people say, when a lot of times people say, "Oh, that won't translate to movies," that translated very well. The cost, give the costume designers, you know, props for that. Um, but now that we've seen him in the sh- movie, and now that we know that there's a TV show coming, this is this character is not going away. I, I think you're going to either see him in future projects. They could kill him off in the TV show, but I mean, a movie and a TV show, he's, he, this character is not going anywhere. Um, and now that you're seeing, now that you, now that the movie is out and we know all the things we know, the prices for his first appearances are going bananas. Yeah, I think what you're seeing is when the character, like a Dave Bautista right. or a John Cena, where the physicality of it, where their physical presence is a big part of it, you know, that's not something where they can slack off, right? It's right. not like something where John could be like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to take a break on the working out. I'm not going to work out the way I used to. I'm not going to, you know, I could let go a little bit because, you know, I'm a big star now. Like those roles, the way the costumes and the physicality of it are designed, you just can't do that. Right. Yeah. There's no so, taking a break um, there. There's no taking a break there. So I think that's why, why Dave said that uh, Guardians 3 will be his last. Uh, he said it'll be 54 when it comes out or 53. And he said yeah. he just can't do the shirtless scenes anymore, which I, I get, you know, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to let anybody down. Let so, the man eat a cheeseburger. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so The Fighting Five, number 40, uh, November of 1966. Um, obviously, it's a, a book that's very, very old, so there's not a lot of high-grade copies. So we'll talk about some lower-grade copies. Obviously, it's the origin and first appearance of Peacemaker, Christopher Smith, uh, Joe Gill's story, 
uh, and then uh, Bach and Boyette art. So it's there are zero uh, nine eights. There's only one blue label nine point six. There's only one blue label nine point four. Wow. There's two blue label nine point twos, three blue label nine point zeros, and three blue label eight point fives. So you really can't get anything in the higher grades. A six and a half is about six hundred bucks, which actually, considering the fact that there's nothing really eight five and above, the entire there's pop of eight there. five and above is two, four, seven, ten copies. Yeah, uh, six hundred bucks for a six five actually doesn't sound so unreasonable. And I, and I, I agree with that you. Up. Yeah, go go find yourself a clean copy uh, and, and pick it up today. Uh, they, they are definitely starting to move. I mean, I see some clean six point um, you know, and, and seven point five. So, you know, seven point five is listed at five thousand. Uh, you know, so so that's probably what it's going to cost you. But but you could definitely pick up some of the lower grades right now. And yeah, there's Char Charlton books really haven't been that collectible in the past, but you're starting to see an uptick on the Blue Beetle stuff, the the uh, the question stuff, uh, and now with Peacemaker. So I mean, they're out there. You just got to find them. Yeah. All right. Thank you everybody for joining us today. It's been another fun show. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments field, and we will see everybody next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Thanks, guys.